Our final video of this book series is going to be about body image. Let's talk about is it good to be quote unquote slim, right? Slim is just one of many cultural constructs about how our body should look. Not how they do, but how they quote unquote should. Um, but achieving these ideals and being a healthy weight aren't necessarily related. Body size and shape aren't always the best indicators of our health. Someone who eats a less healthy diet and does little exercise may be genetically predetermined to have less body fat than someone in a larger body, leading a healthier lifestyle. Based on current evidence, weight loss can be maintained, but a gradual process is more effective. Losing a pound or two a week allows your body to adapt and is sustainable in the long run if you are a person that wants to lose weight. As babies, we are in tune with our body's hunger signals and eat only when we need. But as we age, we're surrounded by messaging um, and social pressures and media around food and lose this innate ability. The complex psychology surrounding our relationship with food undoubtedly plays a role in the failure of diets and can be the biggest barrier to weight loss. Research shows that restrained eaters experience more intense food cravings, heightened emotions surrounding food, and greater preoccupation with it. Likewise, categorizing foods as good or bad creates a restrictive mindset that increases food cravings and, in turn, the risk of overeating these foods when they are available. Labeling foods as treats implies that they can be eaten only once earned, which increases desire. Again, we don't want that. Food is food. Uh, goal setting can also have detrimental psychological effects as veering off plan um, or off the bandwagon can prompt feelings of failure and guilt and subsequent overeating. Um, should you count calories? We talked a little bit about calories last week. Counting helps build awareness of our daily energy consumption, but food is more than calories and reducing it to a number risks oversimplifying its nourishment. Unhealthy counting as well as being time consuming, calorie counting can lead to restrictive behaviors or unhealthy habits. It may be tempting to eat highly processed foods because calories are clearly displayed on packaging and easier to count or to exclude nutrient dense foods like oily fish and nuts purely on the basis of their calorie content. Can you rely on the scale? No. Um, if you're trying to lose weight, stepping onto the scale feels like a moment of truth, but the number doesn't show what's actually happening in your body. Your weight can fluctuate after just one meal and over a day. We're often heavier in the evening after eating and drinking. Salt, alcohol, medication, and menstruation can also cause water retention. If you want to establish a rough base weight, use the same scale at the same time without clothes. In addition, over-reliance on the scale could contribute to an unhealthy body image and relationship with food, and for some people, it can become a crutch. What doesn't the scale tell you? A lot. Um, but be mindful that a weight reading doesn't reflect how much body fat you're carrying, your overall body composition, or how healthy you are, because it's a number, and that's all. That's all that it is. Even if the number on the scale isn't falling, you could still be losing body fat, gaining muscles, sleeping better, and improving your gut health. There's so much more to health than just how much you weigh. Um, if you have any questions on it, you guys want to talk about this more, feel free to drop a comment below and let me know.